The Seagull Project presents Oysters by Anton Chekhov, as read by Ayo Tushinde. You can find more stories from the Great Souls podcast wherever you found this. I need no great effort of memory to recall in every detail the rainy autumn evening when I stood with my father in one of the more frequented streets of Moscow and felt that I was gradually being overcome by a strange illness. I had no pain at all, but my legs were giving way under me. The words stuck in my throat. My head slipped weakly on one side. It seemed as though in a moment I must fall down and lose consciousness. If I had been taken into a hospital at that minute, the doctors would have had to write over my bed the Latin word for hunger, veins, a disease which is not in the manuals of medicine. Beside me on the pavement stood my father in a shabby summer overcoat and a serge cap from which a bit of white wadding was sticking out. On his feet he had big, heavy galoshes. Afraid, vain man, that people would see that his feet were bare under the galoshes, he had drawn the tops of some old boots up round the calves of his legs. This poor, foolish, queer creature, whom I loved the more warmly, the more ragged and dirty his smart summer overcoat became, had come to Moscow five months before to look for a job as a copying clerk. For those five months he had been trudging about Moscow, looking for work, and it was only on that day that he had brought himself to go into the street to beg for alms. Before us was a big house of three stories, adorned with a blue signboard with the word restaurant on it. My head was drooping feebly backwards and to one side, and I could not help looking upwards at the lighted windows of the restaurant. Human figures were flitting about at the windows. I could see the right side of the orchestrion, two oleographs, hanging lamps. Huh. Staring into one window, I saw a patch of white. The patch was motionless, and its rectangular outline stood out sharply against the dark brown background. I looked intently and made out of the patch a white placard on the wall. Something was written on it, but what it was I could not see. For half an hour I kept my eyes on the placard. Its white attracted my eyes and, as it were, hypnotized my brain. I tried to read it, but my efforts were in vain. Uh, At last the strange disease got the upper hand. The rumble of the carriages began to seem like thunder. In the stench of the street, I distinguished a thousand smells. The restaurant lights and the lamps dazzled my eyes like lightning. My five senses were overstrained and sensitive beyond the normal. I began to see what I had not seen before. Oh, ye stairs. I made out on the placard. A strange word. I had lived in the world eight years and three months, but had never come across that word. What did it mean? Surely it was not the name of the restaurant keeper. But signboards with names on them always hang outside, not on the walls indoors. Papa, what does oysters mean? I asked in a husky voice, making an effort to turn my face towards my father. My father did not hear. He was keeping a watch on the movements of the crowd and following every passerby with his eyes. From his eyes, I saw that he wanted to say something to the passerby, but the fatal word hung like a heavy weight on his trembling lips and could not be flung off. He even took a step after one passerby and touched him on the sleeve, but when he turned round, he said, I beg your pardon? He was overcome with confusion and staggered back. Papa, what those oysters mean? I repeated. 
it is an animal <laughs> that it lives in the sea. I instantly pictured to myself this unknown marine animal. I thought it must be something midway between a fish and a crab. As it was from the sea, they made of it, of course, a very nice hot fish soup with savory pepper and laurel leaves. Or broth with vinegar and fricassee of fish and cabbage. Or crayfish sauce. Or served it cold with horseradish. I vividly imagined it being brought from the market, quickly cleaned, quickly put in the pot, quickly, quickly, for everyone was hungry. Oh, oh. Oh, awfully hungry. Oh, from the kitchen rose the smell of hot fish and crayfish soup. I felt that this smell was tickling my palate and nostrils and that it was gradually taking possession of my whole body. The restaurant, my father, the white placard, my sleeves were all smelling of it, smelling so strongly that I began to chew. I moved my jaws and swallowed as though I really had a piece of this marine animal in my mouth. My legs gave way from the blissful sensation I was feeling, and I clutched at my father's arm to keep myself from falling and leant against his wet summer overcoat. My father was trembling and shivering. He was cold. Baba, are oysters a Lenten dish? I asked. Mm, mm, they are eaten alive, said my father. They are in shells, like uh, tortoises, but in two halves. The delicious smell instantly stopped affecting me, and the illusion vanished. Oh! Now I understood it all. How nasty, I whispered. How nasty. So that's what oysters meant. I imagined myself a creature like a frog. A frog sitting in a shell, peeping out from it with its big, glittering eyes and moving its revolting jaws. I imagined this creature in a shell with claws glittering eyes, and a slimy skin being brought from the market. (gasps) The children would all hide while the cook, frowning with an air of disgust, would take the creature by its claw, put it on a plate, and carry it into the dining room. The grown-ups would take it and eat it! Eat it alive with its eyes, its teeth, its legs, while it squeaked! and tried to bite their lips. I frowned, but... But why did my teeth move as though I were munching? The creature was loathsome, disgusting, terrible. But I ate it, ate it greedily, afraid of distinguishing its taste or smell. And as soon as I had eaten one... I saw the glittering eyes of a second, a third. I ate them, too. At last, I ate the table napkin, the plate, my father's galoshes, the white placard. I ate everything that caught my eye because I felt that nothing but eating would take away my illness. The oysters had a terrible look in their eyes and were loathsome. I shuddered at the thought of them, but I wanted to eat. To eat! Oysters! Give me some oysters! Was the cry that broke from me and I stretched out my hand. Help us, gentlemen! I heard at that moment my father said in a hollow, shaking voice. I am ashamed to ask, but my God, I can bear no more! Oysters! I cried, pulling my father by the skirts of his coat. You mean to say that you eat oysters? (laughs) A little chap like you! (laughs) I heard laughter close to me. Two gentlemen in top hats were standing before us, looking into my face and laughing. Hey, uh, you really eat oysters, youngster? (laughs) That's interesting. 
How do you eat them? Oh, I remember a strong hand dragged me into the lighted restaurant. A minute later, there was a crowd round me, watching with curiosity and amusement. I sat at a table and ate something slimy, salt with the flavor of dampness and moldiness. But I ate greedily, without chewing, without looking, and trying to discover what I was eating. I fancied that if I opened my eyes, I should see glittering eyes, claws, and sharp teeth. All at once, I began biting something hard. There was a the sound of a scrunching. <laughs> He's eating the shells. <laughs> Laughed the crowd. Oh, little silly! Do you suppose you can eat that? <laughs> After that, I remember a terrible thirst. I was lying in my bed and I could not sleep for heartburn and the strange taste in my parched mouth. My father was walking up and down, gesticulating with his hands. <clears throat> I believe I've caught a cold. He was muttering. <sighs> the feeling in my head is though someone were sitting on it. Perhaps it is because I have not <clears throat> eaten anything today. Oh. I really am a queer, stupid creature. I saw those men pay ten roubles for the oysters. Why didn't I go up to them and ask them just to lend me something? They would have, they would have given something. Towards morning, I fell asleep, and dreamt of a frog sitting in a shell, moving its eyes. At midday, I was awakened by thirst and looked for my father. He was still walking up and down and gesticulating. <laughs>